Hey there, welcome to day 1330 of What She Up To Now. Sharon Hornell from here, documenting the journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. And a little bit of back and forth. I like to uh, tip my toes in a lot of different things. It keeps me feeling younger, although I'm getting older. Uh, it gives me something to work on. It keeps me moving forward toward the goals and objectives that I've set for my life. Now today, I am thinking about feeling inferior. And when we feel inferior, when we feel less than, when we feel not good enough, when we feel like other people are better than we are, when we, heaven forbid, compare ourselves to others. And as much as I like to think I don't do that, I got a huge wake-up call to that when I came to the online world. In 2017, I joined ClickFunnels organization. I had virtually no online experience, none whatsoever. You know, I think I had a Facebook account for a few years, but for the most part, didn't really do much online. And what I did do online, I didn't do right. Uh, so I joined the ClickFunnels organization, became a certified ClickFunnels funnel builder, which I've never, I've built funnels with other people, but never for them as a, as a hired service or as an agency or anything, because that's not why I joined ClickFunnels. I joined ClickFunnels so I could learn the process of how to build an online business and how to get online. And had I done that and stuck to that and followed that and, and taken that straight line path, I suspect that I would have been light years ahead of where I personally think that I am now on my journey of where I want to be, from where I am to where I want to be. But like so many other human beings that come online or do anything in the world, we get pulled in different directions. We get attracted to different things that draw our attention and uh, we feel sometimes like they're wasting our time. But we, we study and we learn and we look at things and we keep moving before we actually take action and do things because we don't feel ready, we don't feel good enough. And I'd love to be one, say I'm one of those people that just jumps right in, and for some things, I jump right in. Other things, nope, it takes me a process to build up my courage to actually take action and do something. Now, I think the older I get, the better I get at taking action, seeing something, figuring it out, and, and then just starting to do it, because I've learned that you can plan till you turn blue in the face, but something's still going to go wrong. I've never met anyone who had a plan and absolutely everything went textbook or and, and step by step according to that plan, especially when it involves anything in the real world, right? In theory and in, uh, in school, in college, we would plan out, we would do projects and we would plan to check act different scenarios that happen. And then we would we would lay them out for our professors or our or at work. I used to do what ifs for one of my boss that drove me insane because we never ever once implemented any of these what if scenarios that he had us do, all the department heads. And we would plan them all out and something would inevitably happen that would blow the whole plan up or blow a major portion of the plan up and we had to go back to the drawing board and start over and redo the plan. That's just inherent in life. Look at COVID-19. If you didn't believe that and you hadn't experienced that, and I believe there's some people that have led their life blessed and unscathed up to 2020, and I believe that 2020 probably in some way, shape, or form impacted almost every person on the planet. You know, I'm sure animals as well, but let's just talk about people. We were hugely impacted, and some of us less than others. Like. I had already been on a journey for two years to simplify and separate my life because of personal reasons, personal challenges. I have vision challenges, and so you know, you see me using my magnifying glass all the time to, to see a little bit, but I, I had already been doing that. So when COVID hit, this is kind of selfish, but it sort of felt like everybody else joined my not-so-super-fun party, and we were all in the same boat, not just me feeling sorry for myself, figuring stuff out, because I had to do things differently than I ever had before. Now everybody was having to figure these things out. Uh, and, you know, for a shorter term, temporary way, you now some things have changed forever, right? Some things will have changed forever due to the way, not because of the pandemic itself and the illness itself, but because of the way it was dealt with and handled and manipulated. Uh, some things will be different forever until we all go back to thinking for ourselves and doing what's right for each of us on an individual basis versus looking for someone to tell us what's right. Uh, I, again, not a topic I'm even going to get into, but it's just sometimes you sit back and you watch the insanity and you just take a deep breath and sigh and, and wonder what the heck are people doing and thinking. And not judging, just wondering and curious about what the heck 
are people doing and thinking? Are they really going to, you know, change and destroy the greatest country in the world for their own selfish reasons, for their own power, for their own manipulation, for their own greed, because that's what it all boils down to. Again, I'm talking about it, and I'm not even paying attention to it. Okay, so our our annual challenge today was from Eleanor Roosevelt, one of my favorite quotes. I love this quote. You know, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And again, it's been used time and time again in sayings and writings and movies, and it's because it's true. We forget that only we are in charge of our feelings and our emotions and our thoughts. Believe it or not, yeah, people can mind F us and mind control us and propagandize us, but ultimately it is up to us to choose what we're going to pay attention to, choose what we're going to think, see, hear, feel, smell, taste, touch. It's up to us, right? At least the vast majority of us. If you're being tortured, please ignore what I'm saying right now. But otherwise, we have the free will. We have the mental capability to decide what we're going to listen to, who we're going to believe, what we're going to feel, what we're going to think. Uh, and when we when we give that to other people, we're absolutely positively giving away our personal power, which is the one true thing that we have, is the ability to be ourselves, choose for ourselves, decide for ourselves. So uh, I love that one. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And I guess that's what got me to thinking about the whole inferior, superior, and there's a lot of that nonsense. You know, we've learned it from from the time we were little bitty kids. You know, you go to school and there's a bully on the playground or there's a bully in your class or there's a bully uh, at your job or in your work. Somebody that thinks that they can use you as a punching bag or put you down or belittle you. Um, I'm trying to think if... I'm sure there's people I know that ha that have not succumbed to bullies or been bullied, but I, w I, I don't know that I know anybody that hasn't been in some way, shape, or form harassed, put down, degraded, bullied, treated poorly. It doesn't have anything to do with them personally. It's got to do with the person that's, that's doing that behavior, right? The person that's trying to manipulate someone else, it, there's nothing wrong with the person they're trying to manipulate. There's something wrong with the person that's doing the manipulating. There's nothing wrong with the person that's being bullied. The thing is wrong with the person that's doing the bullying. So, um, and and I have my own theories on why people bully. You only bully when there's there's something missing in you. You don't bully or harm or belittle other people if you love yourself and feel okay about yourself and know that you're an awesome human being. No matter what, no matter what our differences, guess what? Every single human being on this planet is different. I have my totally weird idiosyncrasies, just like everybody else does, right? And that's what makes the world an awesome and amazing and incredible place, is that we're all different. And we can love each other for our differences, just like we love each other for our similarities. So don't let anybody like make you feel inferior. Remember, nobody can make you do, feel, think anything unless you let them. You have to give people consent to brainwash you, right? Unless, again, you're being tortured um, and in captivity and forced to be restrained and and are inundated with things, we can, we can not turn on the TV, right? We don't have to listen to the media. We can stay off social media. I actually remember before there was social media, and I seemed to survive my life pretty happily just fine without knowing what everybody on the planet was eating for breakfast or what cats were doing funny things or what babies were doing funny things. I got by just fine, and I, I'm sure you did too. So remember, and also keep in mind that what we see online is just, it's just like television and movies. It's a little snapshot and piece of what people want us to see, what story they want to tell us, and what they want to show us. There's still so much more. It's kind of the whole iceberg principle. There's so much more under the surface of each and every one of us than we could ever show anyone else. And sometimes it's intentional. A lot of times it's not. We just don't even realize what's below the surface in ourselves, much less do we know how to show that to the rest of the world. So thinking about inferiority, thinking about comparing ourselves to others, thinking about uh, not feeling good enough or feeling less than or not feeling capable, and that's all stories we make up in our head. So why don't we just make up stories that empower us and make us feel good and capable and successful and not superior, but good enough to do whatever it is that we choose. All right, enough on that that dead horse. What do we talk about in Supersize Your Business today? Supersize Your Business today, our idiom was, let there be light.
let there be light. And I used this glass. It's actually a beer glass, an ale glass from my kids, but it had a sunshine on it. So it was like, okay, light, sunshine. And I didn't really know where to go with that, but for some reason I decided I would talk about the 15 core strategies to build and grow and supersize your business. And there's, you know, again, like any list, we could make lists of anything. We could make the top five. We could do 15 core. We can do a thousand and one ways to supersize and grow and expand your business, right? But I just shared 15 ideas, and it uh, it's since I joined the online world because a couple of them would never have made the list because five years ago, I didn't even know what they were. I didn't really know what a sales funnel was five years ago. I didn't really know what a webinar was five years ago. So they wouldn't have made my list. But, but nowadays they make my list because a sales funnel is just simply a sales process. How do you do your sales? And you want to know the process of the most successful salespeople in your organization so that you can repeat that with everybody else. And then you can expand and grow and continually improve that sales process. You want to then, another one was have a webinar. And a webinar is just an automated, recorded, available 24-7 version of your sales process, right? And who would who doesn't want to have that? If we can have that uh, out, you know, communicating and, and, and marketing for us 24-7 for very little cost, it doesn't cost much to have a webinar up, uh, why would we not do that? It's much cheaper than any salesperson we would ever have. And we'll probably attract more business to us that we would never find otherwise, even with cold calling and other strategies that people use. So we talked about 15 different ways to do that. And there really are, you know, people, and there, there literally are infinite possibilities of how we can expand and grow our business. And there's millions of different ways that people have and continue to do it. But when you break all those down and cluster them, there's core strategies that work time and time again. You can try franchising. You can do strategic partnerships. You can look for new opportunities. You can research a competition. You can look at other industries and find out what they're doing and apply it to your industry. You can do international expansion. You can diversify your offer lineup. All these things are been around for a long time, been around since people have been starting businesses, right? Uh, so nothing really new, but there's... Millions of people out complicating the process, selling the process, marketing the process in different ways to draw in and to attract and to serve the people that they're here to serve. It's all good, right? It's all as it should be. So that was our idiom for today. And I suppose it's a stretch to get from let there be light to how do you, you know, what are the core strategies and the core ways to supersize your business? But that is apparently how my mind works, how my brain works. So that's why I went with it today. Uh, I'm sure there's other ways I could have gone. I could have gone with light and attention and how do you lighten up your business and your life. Maybe we'll do that another day. When we, we, maybe we'll use see the light and we'll figure out ways to, to make our businesses more fun. I don't know about you, but uh, through the years, some of my businesses have been awesome and stupendous and fun, fun, fun from the get-go. All work, all challenging, right? But some have been a lot more fun than others. Uh, and a lot of that was about on me, right? A lot of it was the way I was looking at the business, the situation, the, the what was going on, the people involved, the processes we did or didn't have. Uh, and as I changed and got better and grew and figured more things out, my businesses became more and more and more fun. Hmm. Funny how that works. As I grow, my businesses grow automatically. So that is what I'm working on. I got to get going on the Get Up and Go Challenge. It is already the 20th of September so we are just about 10 days right September is 30 days 10 days away October 1st the next get up and go challenge and I thought I was going to work on it but we had big storms and we've been removing trees and cleanup and all kinds of craziness hanging out with my granddaughter so that the kids could do the cleanup and get that done my son-in-law is a lineman so he was on storm for the weekend uh getting and restoring power to everyone and thank you I appreciate him so much he was working in Minnesota but the same type folks were here in Wisconsin bringing our power back and getting it restored too and it's amazing how we take for granted electricity and what an incredibly uh, great gift it is in all of our lives without electricity we are very quickly set back to the Stone Age <laughs> at least in my household and in my life. All right, 
any questions, need help with anything, either any questions on the offline or online world, again, it's in you know, over a quarter century in corporate America, over 27 different offline businesses. And again, i got to figure out how many I've been in in the online world because it's been a lot as well. Uh, any questions, though, I might not know your specific answer, but I guarantee I can help you get to the next thing you need to do, the next step, so that you never feel stuck. One of the things I disliked the most when I came in the online world was I would, I would have a problem, and instead of asking, I told myself I could figure it out, I had to figure it out. And I would spend one or two weeks sometimes on a problem that really kept me frustrated and frozen and running in circles, even though I was searching for the answers and looking for it. And it wasn't until, lo and behold, I would formulate the question, ask. I would type it in the box. I had a great group of people that I, I was more than, you know, welcome to ask a question to, but I didn't want to seem stupid, so I didn't ask. So I'd try to figure it out and try to figure it out myself. Plus, I also wanted people to know that I wasn't just asking every silly question that popped into my head, expecting people to do my work for me. I knew I had to learn and grow and figure out how to problem solve and do things myself. But there were a couple of problems that I was running into that if I just sort of asked, I could have saved myself a whole lot of time and energy and frustration and heartache. And so I'm encouraging you, don't be like Sharon, just ask. All right, have an awesome day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow.